ilha filha é mua ilha lá no lango. We don't want any violence. May peace prevail on earth. May their wish be your wish. That was our beautiful Tammy Briggs. And welcome everyone to World Unity Week. I am Tezkaya Gabriel from Pathways to Peace. And I am so honored and delighted to be here. And so not only here by myself, but to be here with my beloved Tammy, who you're going to hear more from, and uh, Masako Banda, who Avon uh, lovingly called her son. And so in a moment, I'll talk a little bit more about each of them. So in our time together, um, we'd like to be able to do several things. First of all, um, I just want to say thank you and that I'm so honored and delighted to be here with my sisters, who you'll be hearing from after Tammy, Masanko, and I are complete with our very brief presentation today. And we really want to honor our dear, beloved Avon Madison. And Avon um, is not only known as the leader in the movement that resulted in the unanimous resolution for the International Day of Peace in 1981. And of course, with many other peace builders, some of them are sisters that you'll be hearing from today. But she also, our dear beloved Avon, who passed um, over a year ago, a year and a half ago, inspired World Unity Week. And so Avon said in a meeting of World Unity Week and planning for World Unity Week in the 99 days of peace through unity, Avon said, we should look at World Unity Week as a springboard or a launch of the days of peace leading up to the International Day of Peace. And Ben Bowler and the other leaders at Unity Earth said, yes, we need to do that. So now every year at this time, 
we get to honor Avon as the inspiration. And Avon, as some of you know very well, um, is very beloved to Pathways to Peace. She is the founder of Pathways to Peace and our president. And so she has since, as I said, in the last year and a half ascended and now supporting our work for peace from the other side. So we hope in our short time together today um, to lift you, to inspire you, and to give you um, a practical tool, the Peace Wave, for you to make Peace Day every day. So that's what we hope to do. And thank you for being here with us. So what I'd like to do first is to bring back uh, Tammy Briggs. And Tammy is what I lovingly call our Pathways to Peace in-house harpist. But she is so much more than that. She is volunteer extraordinaire, and she has helped and supported Pathways in its growth in our work for peace in so many different ways. And so I'm going to ask Tammy to say a few words and then play. So Tammy. Wonderful. Thank you, Tez. Always a joy and an honor to be with you, Tez, as well as the entire Pathways to Peace organization. So I bring today to honor Avon a song that was actually the very first song I played for her. It's called Peace Blessing. And after I played this song, she called me up personally. I had never talked or met her before. She called me up and she said, oh my gosh, when you played this song, I literally saw a beam of light come in, into my heart, and I saw it as a clarion call for the world to be at peace. When I play this song, almost every time, I can't think of a time actually that it hasn't happened, Avon comes in usually around the back of my neck, encircles my arms, and then comes through the strings. So I invite you to connect with your heart as I play Peace Blessing in honor of Dear Avon.
thank you so much, Tammy. The angels are singing and Avon in the company of heaven <laughs> is standing up in joy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh goodness, so we should take a deep breath. Oh, goodness, we are so blessed. And you know, Avon used to quote Brother Phil by saying, when we honor one, we honor all. So as we honor Avon, <laughs> we honor our sisters here with us in this video, as well as all of the Peace Builders tuning in and beyond. All of you need to know, as we say, you are a pathway to peace. And we honor you. We lift you. And we hope to inspire you to keep on keeping on in that great endeavor of bringing peace to our world. And with that, it's just my honor and delight to uh, introduce, just say a little bit about Masanko. The first thing I want to tell you about Masanko today is that he is struggling with not having a voice. But Masanko's voice has moved thousands, if not millions of people around our world as Masanko brings his drums, his African drums, movement, dance, and singing to adults and children of all ages in schools, in community settings, um, around our world. And so, as I said, Avon so deeply loved Masako and uh, referred to him as her son. That, re that, um, was, that connection was so deep. And so I'm just so honored that Masanko can be with us. He typically is living in Malawi, but he is here in the States so we could bring him in on Zoom. And so he's awake instead of when we usually try to get him into meetings. And um, if he can, he'll say a few words. Um, and then he is going to drum for peace for the International Day of Peace, which is September 21st, and for Avon. And so, Masanko. Thank you so much, uh, Tezekiah, uh, for that beautiful introduction. Thank you, Tammy, for the uh, music. I hope you can hear me. Give a thumbs up if you can hear me. All right, great. No, um, I am so touched by this gathering and this offering because it was very important to Avon, the International Day of Peace and the lighting of the peace flame for people around the world to come together. And what I cherish to this day is the care and attention she gave to the young people, understanding that young people are the ones that are going to lead us to peace, that young people need to be involved. From the first time that I met her 30 years ago when I was 30 myself, she said, come, bring your drum, bring your story, bring your dance. Let's go reach people around the world with this message of peace. So it is a joy to me to be a part of this presentation and to send this gift of words, uh, the beautiful harp music that we just heard, and to add uh, the drum, which Avon so loved. She always said, have you brought your drum? Do you have your drum? And so here are the drum and the peace song that I would share to Avon.
peace in the world. Peace, peace, peace in the world. Thank you, thank you, Sanko. Our hearts are aligning to that beat of peace. Thank you. And so what we would like to conclude with in honoring Avon is to share a tool, a tool with you that had great meaning to her, which is the peace wave. And the Peace Wave uh, was established in 1983. And Avon told me the story was that she was in conversation uh, with the Secretary, Under Secretary General of the United Nations, Robert Mueller. And they were talking about the fact that nothing much had happened since 1981 when the resolution was adopted. And so she and he together started to plan what would become an international peace gathering in San Francisco, which was the birthplace of the United Nations, uh, which occurred in 1984. Um, but in the meantime, it was Avon's endeavor and her desire to make peace day every day. So she, and, and what, who she would call Robert, Robert Mueller, decided to create the Peace Wave. And the Peace Wave is just a minute of silence, a moment of peace that is intended to be practiced at 12 noon in every time zone. So we know it must be 12 noon in some time zone or close to that. And what we would love for you to do is to be able to practice that peace wave with us and around the world every day at noon in your time zone. Therefore, bringing in that wave of energy that, that will wash around the world, that wave, that wave of peace. So I'm going to ask Tammy to accompany me. And because we have your attention, we will, I will set up the peace wave, but please know that it's just for you. You just get to take a pause for a minute a minute of peace, a moment of silence that joins your heart and the energy of millions of others around our planet and lifts the field of peace. So this is the peace wave and you can find it on our website pathways to peace.org if you'd like to have it as a video otherwise we invite you to just pause for peace every day at noon so now we ask you to just relax to slow your breath to breathe a little more slowly, a little more deeply. If it helps you to count, you can count five counts on the inhale and five counts on the exhale. And as you breathe, we can focus our attention on the center of our chest, the seat of the heart. And imagine that breath coming in and out through that beautiful space. 
that heart space, that place of peace, of calm, that place of kindness, compassion, harmony. And with every breath, we feel our hearts growing larger with all that beautiful energy, filling every cell in our body, coming off the crown of our head and out through our fingers and beyond, down through our feet into beloved Gaia. So out, up, down, and beyond to all living things and the planet herself, bathing our dear Gaia and everything upon her and within her with that beautiful peace. As we breathe the one breath and imagine the one heart, our energy goes out in the embrace of unity, fully connected, fully aware, and infused with love. Love for self, love for others, love for everyone and everything, love for a beloved Gaia. And we leave you with peace. And so it is, and peace prevails on earth. I'm grateful to be here. I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for the gift of your presence. Right now, we have an unprecedented opportunity upon Earth as human beings. We have an opportunity to embody peace in our thinking, in our hearts, and in our hands and our actions. We have a chance that we can be peace and bring about the peace upon earth that so many of us believe in and know is possible. I would like to honor our ancestors, the ancestors of, that, are, that were human, the human ancestors, the animal ancestors, the plant and tree and all life form ancestors, the rocks, I would also like to honor the future progeny, the future humans to come. We have an opportunity to send our love into the future in the way that we live right now, in the way that we strive towards being kindness and love and peace. I'd like to sing a song for you that I learned from one of my beloved teachers, Michael Mead. He learned this song from ancestor Maladoma Somme of West Africa. I invite you after you hear me singing it to sing it along with me. It is a call, a summoning 
to all of our ancestors to help bring them forth and be present with us as we do this significant work of becoming humankind right now. We are not alone. So I invite you to sing it with me. The first verse summons the masculine and the second verse summons the feminine. And so through this song, I invite us to welcome and honor our past and live fully into our present and also to lean and love into the future. Hora samene, Hora samene, Hora samene wo, Hora samene wo, Hora mamene. Pura ma mene, pura ma mene wo, pura ma mene wo, pura sa mene, pura sa mene. Put us on an a Amen, Ashe, Aho, Namaste, Blessed Be. As members of humanity's family, we share many things. One thing we all share, every human being, whatever age or circumstance. We all share breathing, our most fundamental life source. We see every breath as a possibility for peace. We'll be breathing together for world peace as a quiet contemplation. But this can be a daily practice in daily life. While we're waiting in line, while we're cleaning, while we're in traffic, all different times of day, we can peace breathe and generate that energy of peace for ourselves and for the planet. So let's close our eyes now. That beautiful music reverberating around us. And we slow our breathing down, following the movement of our breathing. As we breathe, we let peace fill our hearts and minds, flow through our bodies. With each breath, we let peace expand, filling your room, touching your family, your friends. Peace expanding widely across your region, across all countries, in harmony with all nature. 
With each breath, we let peace touch the entire world. Let's breathe together, inhale, exhale. Inhale, world, exhale, peace. Inhale, world, exhale, peace. Inhale, world, exhale, peace. Inhale, world. Exhale, peace. Let's all try by ourselves at our own pace. Completing this breath, peace. Thank you so much. Thank you all who are gathered. Let's keep breathing peace with every breath. Thank you. Hello, my name is Zach. I'm a high school sophomore from Chicago. I started peace breathing as part of my Taekwondo training when I was 10 and it helps me when I'm nervous or angry. So let's try one right now. Closing your eyes. Inhale, world. Exhale, peace. Thank you. Jen, I know you from taking classes at the Peace School, but I hear as a teacher outside of the Peace School, you've incorporated peace breathing into your teachings. Can you tell me more about that? Yes, thank you, Zach. I've been practicing peace breathing since 2003, and I love peace breathing, and I love to share it with others. So I've developed some peace breathing programs in several Chicago public schools. One of those schools, Ruiz Elementary, last winter, seventh grade students began leading the daily call to peace and peace breathing during morning announcements. Each day, they honored one country, one state, and the city of Chicago. At another school, Lindblom Math and Science Academy, I designed a year-long class, so students and I met weekly, we practiced peace breathing together, and reflected on the stories and ideas presented in Master Kim's peace breathing book. It's wonderful today to be joined by two of those students, Courtney Greenlee and Michael Charles. Mike, what do you remember about first being introduced to peace breathing? and its impact on you as a high school student and an athlete? Uh, I definitely remember the first class that I had where we uh, did peace breathing. It was so peaceful and so calming. Um, as I closed my eyes and I took my first breaths um, for the peace breathing class, I could really feel myself just coming to a center. And at that point, I thought like, this is something that I can incorporate outside of just class. So before games, I would uh, practice, you know, peace breathing. And if I was stressed or was doing some type of assignment, uh, I would always just try to get myself back to that calmness. It's something that I, you know, use throughout college, playing college basketball and what I use in, my, in the work in my everyday life now. 
And Courtney, I know that you took some yoga classes at the Peace School last year. And I've heard that you've also been sharing with others about peace breathing. So obviously you remembered the Peace School, you remembered peace breathing. I'm curious to hear about the Peace School's impact and peace breathing's impact on your life now. So after taking it with you at school, I had to start incorporating it into my everyday life because of building a business and just being stressed. And I found myself becoming more stressed all over again. And I was just like, I need to go do something. And then one day I was just like, what is the school that Ms. Moray took, <laughs> took us to? And it took me back to the peace school. So I walked in looking for you. And then, <laughs> and then I came and I was just like, I just want to take a class. And then class transformed into yoga and then yoga transformed into just, um, was it jujitsu? Or I don't know. Taekwondo. Taekwondo. Yes. Taekwondo. And then it's just like, it became a, a weekly thing or a bi-weekly, or I tried to at least get it in at least three times out the month um because it was just so centering like mike said and just common in my everyday life so i was just like i have to get back to this because i still would teach people like when i would be stressed they're like what are you doing i'm like i'm breathing i'm peace breathing actually you want to join in <laughs> and people think people don't they're they're like stand off to it at first but once you get them to get to that seven count they're like I do feel better. I do feel more balanced and I do feel more centered. So maybe I should incorporate it into my life. And I was like, maybe I'd be like, maybe you should. <laughs> but yeah, so that's how I got back into the peace school from you introducing it to us and finding my way back, I guess. That's excellent. Thank you, Courtney. Dr. Marty K. Casey, thank you for joining us from St. Louis. I understand that you run a program that heals trauma and that you're incorporating peace breathing into it. Absolutely. Uh, I am so excited about discovering peace breathing because it was the technique that I feel that the Undone Institute method was missing. It's all about centering when you are dealing with trauma, being able to um, align your mind, your body, and your spirit. And in order to do that, you have to bring a calmness to your, your oneness, if you will. And peace breathing is definitely that technique that allows you to do that. Meeting Jennifer and Master Kim was truly a blessing to me and, and my business. And so I'm excited about it. I'm also a professional singer and we deal with breathing all the time. It's all about control, being able to control your breathing so you can sustain your notes. Well, if you think about that pertaining to breathing with peace breathing, you want to be able to, to uh, control your breathing so you can con contain and control your peace of mind, right? So when you close your eyes and you breathe in the word world, think about that for a minute. Everything that, that comes at us from the world, it can be negative, positive, indifferent. We want to be able to control that, right, emotionally and how it lands on us. So as it enters into your body and before you exhale and push it back out, you want to push out what? Something positive, something beautiful, something that you can create from the inside out, you pushing out peace. So inhale world and exhale peace. I do that everywhere I go. It doesn't matter where I am. I could be on stage. I could be with my family. I could be somewhere speaking. Anytime I'm getting ready to show up in the world and I want to show up in a positive way, I take the time out to peace breathe. So, Zach, I thank you for asking me about that, and it's been a pleasure to come and talk to you today. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I like what you said about um, imagine how the world could be if we, could, if we all did that. Um, what you said, um, I mean, really, if we could all be at peace within ourselves, like how many problems would be? resolved Everyone. absolutely absolutely it starts with self we yeah. add to the world but we are a part of the world and so when you start with self and how you show up you're creating that positive energy around you and something as simple as peace breathing really could be the one thing that unites us 
if we all said, you know what, I would be responsible enough to do this every single day. And, and after you do that, put a smile on your face. Let's add that to it as well. And then let's move, let, let's move forward and connect with each other on a daily basis. It will make a difference. So yes. thank you. Yes, yeah, thank you. Um, in fact, thank, thank you everybody. I'm inspired to keep peace breathing and I hope you are too. How do you say it? In Tajik, Suhi Jahoni. In Yoruba, Alafia Fu, Orile Biaye. In Italian, Pace Mondiale. In Malay, Kaamanan Dunia. In Russian, Mirva Vasyam Mirya. In Chinese, Shijia Hopiang. In Ukrainian, Mir Usviti. In Mori, Dunilavi. How do you say it? In Dinka, the Nevinum. In Hebrew, Shalom Ulami. In Azerbaijani, Dunyaya Sul. In Oromifa, Nageni Adunyafi. In Amharic, Salam Na Adam. In Tigrinya, Na Adam Salam. In Somali, Nabada Adunka. In Thai, Lokhang Santipa. In Dutch, Radio of Arya. In Khmer, the Poplo Million Santa Pia. In Portuguese, Paz no Mundo. How do you say it? In Korean, Sege Pyongwa. In French, Pe O Monde. In Telugu, Rapanche Santi Dena Zoba Kangshal. In Spanish, Paz para el Mundo. In Arabic, Assalamu alaikum. In German, Vet Sieben. In Turkish, Dunya Barışı. In Polish, Pokoy na Świecie. In English, World Feast. A face. You can say it, you can think it, you can breathe it. This is how you peace breathe. Inhale, world. Exhale, peace. Peace breathing helps me start my day. It makes me feel calm. When we do peace breathing together, it really helps us set the tone for the day. Inhale, world. Exhale, peace. This is how I peace breathe. Breathe in, world. Breathe out, peace. World. Peace. May peace prevail on earth. May peace be in Albania. May peace be in Andorra. May peace be in Austria. May peace be in Belarus. May peace be in Belgium. May peace be in Bosnia and Herzegovina. May peace be in Bulgaria. May peace be in Croatia. May peace be in the Czech Republic. May peace be in Denmark. 
May peace be in Estonia. May peace be in Finland. May peace be in France. May peace be in Germany. May peace be in Greece. May peace be in Hungary. May peace be in Iceland. May peace be in Ireland. May peace be in Italy. May peace be in Kosovo. May peace be in Latvia. May peace be in Liechtenstein. May peace be in Lithuania. May peace be in Luxembourg. May peace be in Malta. May peace be in Moldova. May peace be in Monaco. May peace be in Montenegro. May peace be in the Netherlands. May peace be in North Macedonia. May peace be in Norway. May peace be in Poland. May peace be in Portugal. May peace be in Romania. May peace be in Russia. May peace be in San Marino. May peace be in Serbia. May peace be in Slovakia. May peace be in Slovenia. May peace be in Spain. May peace be in Sweden. May peace be in Switzerland. May peace be in Ukraine. May peace be in the United Kingdom. May peace be in the Vatican. May peace prevail on earth. May peace be in Bahrain. May peace be in Cyprus. May peace be in Iran. May peace be in Iraq. May peace be in Israel. May peace be in Jordan. May peace be in Kuwait. May peace be in Lebanon. May peace be in Oman. May peace be in Palestine. May peace be in Qatar. May peace be in Saudi Arabia. May peace be in Syria. May peace be in Turkey. May peace be in the United Arab Emirates. May peace be in Yemen. May peace prevail on earth. May peace be in Afghanistan. May peace be in Armenia. May peace be in Azerbaijan. May peace be in Bangladesh. May peace be in Bhutan. 
May peace be in Brunei Darussalam. May peace be in Cambodia. May peace be in China. May peace be in Georgia. May peace be in India. May peace be in Indonesia. May peace be in Japan. May peace be in Kazakhstan. May peace be in Kyrgyzstan. May peace be in Laos. May peace be in Malaysia. May peace be in Maldives. May peace be in Mongolia. May peace be in Myanmar. May peace be in Nepal. May peace be in North Korea. May peace be in Pakistan. May peace be in the Philippines. May peace be in Singapore. May peace be in South Korea. May peace be in Sri Lanka. May peace be in Taiwan. May peace be in Tajikistan. May peace be in Thailand. May peace be in Tibet. May peace be in Timor Leste. May peace be in Turkmenistan. May peace be in Uzbekistan. May peace be in Vietnam. May peace prevail on earth. May peace be in Australia. May peace be in Fiji. May peace be in Kiribati. May peace be in the Marshall Islands. May peace be in Micronesia. May peace be in Nauru. May peace be in New Zealand. May peace be in Palau. May peace be in Papua New Guinea. May peace be in Samoa. May peace be in the Solomon Islands. May peace be in Tonga. May peace be in Tuvalu. May peace be in Vanuatu. May peace prevail on earth. May peace be in Algeria. May peace be in Angola. May peace be in Benin. May peace be in Botswana. May peace be in Burkina Faso. May peace be in Burundi. May peace be in Cameroon. May peace be in Cape Verde. May peace be in the Central African Republic. May peace be in Chad. May peace be in Comoros. May peace be in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. 
May peace be in the Republic of the Congo. May peace be in Cote d'Ivoire. May peace be in Djibouti. May peace be in Egypt. May peace be in Equatorial Guinea. May peace be in Eritrea. May peace be in Eswatini. May peace be in Ethiopia. May peace be in Gabon. May peace be in the Gambia. May peace be in Ghana. May peace be in Guinea. May peace be in Guinea-Bissau. May peace be in Kenya. May peace be in Lesotho. May peace be in Liberia. May peace be in Libya. May peace be in Madagascar. May peace be in Malawi. May peace be in Mali. May peace be in Mauritania. May peace be in Mauritius. May peace be in Morocco. May peace be in Mozambique. May peace be in Namibia. May peace be in Niger. May peace be in Nigeria. May peace be in Rwanda. May peace be in Sao Tome and Principe. May peace be in Senegal. May peace be in Seychelles. May peace be in Sierra Leone. May peace be in Somalia. May peace be in South Africa. May peace be in South Sudan. May peace be in Sudan. May peace be in Tanzania. May peace be in Togo. May peace be in Tunisia. May peace be in Uganda. May peace be in Zambia. May peace be in Zimbabwe. May peace prevail on earth. May peace be in Argentina. May peace be in Bolivia. May peace be in Brazil. May peace be in Chile. May peace be in Colombia. May peace be in Ecuador. May peace be in Guyana. May peace be in Paraguay. May peace be in Peru. May peace be in Suriname. May peace be in Uruguay. May peace be in Venezuela. May peace prevail on earth. May peace be in Antigua and Barbuda. 
May peace be in the Bahamas. May peace be in Barbados. May peace be in Belize. May peace be in Canada. May peace be in Costa Rica. May peace be in Cuba. May peace be in Dominica. May peace be in the Dominican Republic. May peace be in El Salvador. May peace be in Grenada. May peace be in Guatemala. May peace be in Haiti. May peace be in Honduras. May peace be in Jamaica. May peace be in Mexico. May peace be in Nicaragua. May peace be in Panama. May peace be in St. Nitz and Nevis. May peace be in St. Lucia. May peace be in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. May peace be in Trinidad and Tobago. May peace be in the United States of America. May peace prevail on earth. And as we continue this program, we are going to remind everyone that August 6th is Nuclear Prayer Day. We are going to start with the prayer that Voices for a World Free of Nuclear Weapons uses at our monthly meetings. It's called the Nuclear Prayer. And we're going to put it up for you to hear before we move into the Global Silent Minute, and a, a sh short closing. I just am honored to share the prayer that was written by the founder of the United Religions Initiative, the Right Reverend William E. Swing. And he wrote it for a small group meeting 14 years ago when we've met regularly to create voices for a world free of nuclear weapons. Our prayers are needed more than ever and we use this prayer at our meetings and invite you to create your own or add to it. You may pray it with me as you read it from the screen and I will read it. The nuclear prayer. The beginning and the end are in your hands, O creator of the universe. And in our hands, you have placed the fate of this planet. We who are tested by having both creative and destructive power in our free will, turn to you in sober fear and in intoxicating hope. We ask for your guidance and to share in your imagination in our deliberations about the use of nuclear force. Help us to lift the fog of atomic darkness that hovers so pervasively over our earth, your earth, 
so that soon all eyes may see life magnified in your pure light. Bless all of us who wait today for your presence and who dedicate ourselves to achieve your intended peace and rightful equilibrium on earth. In the name of all that is holy and all that is hoped. Amen. And I always add, may peace prevail on earth. drawn to sights of pain. In general, it's not my work. I've walked through sights of pain. I've walked through places of war. I've walked through devastation, but I'm not attracted to doing work with it. I've really, I made a commitment somewhere in my life that I'd rather do what I believe than try to fix what's broken. It is one of the darkest chapters of our human history, and it is by no means long ago. Like so many others, Nina Meyerhoff's life was deeply affected by this tragedy. She was born the very day when her grandmother was deported to Auschwitz. Most of her life, Nina Meyerhoff worked in many parts of the world with young people. It was really hard for me to think about the peace work and the inspiring work that I normally want to hold in, in a place like that. I must say, you know, it just... Uh, you have to be superhuman <laughs> somehow to be able to, to stand in that and go beyond that and, and have, have dealt with it on every cellular level possible. Mm -hmm. When we got to the room with the names, to find your own names, you know, in, in the books from Yad Vashem, uh, it was like a love-hate relationship. It was like, I want to find them, I don't want to find them, I want to find it, I don't want to find it. It was almost like hysteria inside of me. I, I recognize at least about 10 names of the family and the record. So I've pass through this, yes? I did it. That's how I feel. I did it. Do, how many times do I want to do this? Not too much.
My God, it is the worst thing I've ever seen. It has nothing to do with whether it's my identity or not. It is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. You know, it's a death camp, you know? And w I cannot begin to understand how a mind would choose to participate in some of the things that the, these people did. I just, because I know they were all human beings and nobody's born evil. And so where is it that what happened inside of them to bring them to the place that they thought this was okay and be good to do? I mean, how does a mind believe that? when my mind believes just the opposite, which is everybody is here in the world meant to be together and, you know, that we're all valuable. I believe that the young people are not just the next generation, but the next generation in consciousness. Like we're more conscious than the prior generation and that we have to establish arenas that allow them to explore that consciousness and be supported in that so that they can begin to visualize models that work for a, the greater good. Uh, we've been very separate nations and now we've become a global understanding. Yes, the internet has made us a unified mind. We're not using it correctly yet but it has allowed us to live in each other's minds, yeah? And so if we can learn to live in each other's hearts, we'll really raise the level of potential. We all have one common ancestor, creation itself, that moment when it started. And so we are all family. Peace means solving the conflict. But I believe in love. <laughs> so how we create those platforms, how we organize around that, you know, is very important. Um, and I think it's possible. I think it's going to happen anyway. I think that things are going to get worse. It's like crackerjacking time everywhere in the world. I mean, it's just incredible wherever we look, we know that. And, and what I find interesting, what's happened to me recently, is to understand that whatever has happened now was created by somebody else who's re feeling like it's a terrible thing, but they were really the creators of it, you know, from the Ukraine to the Syria and the United States. I mean, it's so intermeshed that, I mean, the, this political stuff that we have to get beyond it. We have to get beyond it. And I think that young people can come forward. They can be the engine of change. They have the energy, they have the consciousness, and we have to give them the platform and support them. I read a post on Facebook from friends of mine, hundreds of refugees at the train station, and they don't have water or food or anything. We took the chance and just went there, and it was 
a pleasure to help them. Definitely was a miracle how I ended up here. I mean, I, I didn't really plan to come to Auschwitz. This is, was not in my planning of my life, but it makes so much sense to have come here. It is a joy to offer this daily global silent minute in our community field of heart coherence, where we are in resonance with life itself as we presence in the joy and recognition of the one heart. As our hearts unite across distance, both sides of the veil, as we listen deeply to what is emerging and demanding new expression through us, for the good of the whole. We give ourselves to this new era of loving right relationship, creating an active healing field that radiates outwards and pulses the planet and beyond with the potency of our collective love and care from the one heart for all of life. Daily, we will observe the exact same 9 p.m. GMT minute of silence as action in sacred unity with millions, both sides of the veil, calling for global cooperation, peace, and freedom. Knowing that the original Big Ben silent minute helped to end World War II, Today, we use our global silent minute to draw forth true peace and spiritual power from the infinite reservoirs of silence. This is to bring an end to all war, to bring peace to all humankind. The power of silence is greater than we know. It is in silence that we experience unity. Silence as action in sacred unity. So let us prepare to enter a global silent minute. With a deep breath, we activate the spirit of peace in our own hearts. And we unite our fiery hearts across distance. Now we invite all those on the other side of the veil to join us. The next thing you will hear is a Tibetan singing bowl as we radiate and pulse our heart love through silence as action in sacred unity.
May the spirit of peace be spread abroad in our hearts, through our groups, and throughout the world. Om Shanti. Peace, may peace prevail on earth. May peace